just clip this to like your belt buckle or your Okay. Pants. Probably going to stay in one place. That's fine. But they, they, the microphones, the microphones needed, so that works. The microphones needed to the people on what they're watching. Hello, can anybody hear me? Yeah, we got about another minute or so. Or Nathan. You can just say Nate. Nate, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm nearsighted, so I like to see the presentation. Yes. I'm not trying to. <laughs> I, I think we're, I think we're going to get started, so I'll, be, I'll introduce you. Welcome back, everyone, and to those attending online. We're about to start our next session. Our speaker is Nate. He has over 15 years of experience in public health research. He's with the Penn State College of yeah, Medicine. He has an advanced knowledge of statistical software and analysis techniques. He holds a doctorate of public health with two master's degrees in clinical research and geographic information systems. Um, we will have questions at the end. If you're attending online, type your questions as they come to you in the chat. And at the end of the session, I will run around with a microphone. So take it away, Nate. Hello, my name's Nathaniel Geyer, and you can call me Nate. I'm doing a presentation called Strategies of Visualization of Data for Cancer Control, Health Communication, and Apophysis Generations in Line View at the Penn State Cancer Institute. I just want to put a disclaimer that this presentation includes sp screenshots from LineView, a educational web GIS tool that was created by PSCI. We are not promoting sales or marketing using LineView. I want to put that in. Here's the outline. History of geovisualization of cancer at Penn State. Timeline and just some screenshots of LineView. Unique features results, future plan, and conclusions. Here are some of the, of the references that Penn State conducted for visualization of spatial health data, like starting from 2014 as early as 1992. And uh, Here's some Penn State cancer control with the studies from 2010 to 2007. Here's a timeline. It started from 1995 to 2015. We had a first version. And then I got involved in 2019, and I developed a side-by-side -side user interface using Leaflet. I originally used Leaflet because it was free and open source. ArcGIS was made using Dogo JS, and that was hard for me to convert into a thing that could be updated relatively. So. I used Leaflet and QGIS to, to, to develop it. And, and I started in 20, 2019 when I was doing my MGIS at Penn State, Masters of GIS. And then I started with a usability study. And then I created a plugin to help with automation. I, pu I published it in a manuscript that was the original title to this presentation. I moved to a permanent server in 2021. Finally published the technical paper in April, and I added bivariate mapping and treadline functionality in October. And now I'm trying to market and create videos for to explain to others about the benefits of using LineView. This, Here's the first version. It was just one map. It was not based on Color Viewer 2.0. It lacked a user interface for generalization of cancer data. It was developed using an older version of 
GIS online and there was inadequate documentation. Uh, here's the first version of my prototype. It used leaflet 1.60 with three plugins and jQuery. The data was census, Medicare, county health rankings, Pennsylvania Department of Health, Health Resources and Service Administration and Penn State Cancer Institute. It was based on Color Bueller 2.0, which is a free and open source website that provides colors, schemas for choropleth maps, and there's our area maps. And, and they also allow me to have side by side where one could be Pennsylvania and another one being the Cancer Institute, which is a 28 county region of Pennsylvania. The objective, uh, then I completed the usability assessment and uh, where I developed survey assessment questions. I did this during COVID in 2020 because that's when I did my master's thesis. I didn't get as many samples because people didn't want to do a <laughs> survey during COVID. Whenever, but, but I did get uh, like 20 people and they gave very informed data on how to further and I published it in International Journal of Geoinformation. It's an MDPI source and it's open access. And uh, it was done through REDCap where I analyzed quantitative survey data, open access content and analysis and close ended item analysis for evaluating patterns in cancer data like task complete window accuracy and time. And here are some of the recommendations I got. Direct hyperlinks were avoided in case the link gets changed, rendering it to be invalid. Standardized qualities using Geostat JS. That's a, another free and open source system that gives a method like uh, of the core platforms such as quantiles, national breaks, and other ones. I uh, uh, Training techniques, including up-to-date data, tabular data using jQuery below the map, create uh, tool options to adjust color palettes, palettes legend poison positioning and reversing colors and providing in-depth documentation via button access at a feedback form and then one that I just did recently bivariate mapping functionality which is and here is the version as of March 23rd because which was published using my technical paper where they had a menu bar a drop down area, a core plaf area, and down below map area, and down below they have a table. It's kind of hard to tell from this version, but I'll show you in another slide. In this technical paper, the object was to describe the process for updating line view, including the methodology of the data to leaflet plugin, GUI with its functionality to provide two demonstrations of using line view to map and chart publicly available data set collected from various sources, including the Census Bureau and Department of Health. And one that I don't get into this because of time is compared the functionality of line view to 10 other public health related web GIS tools. And here are some of the data sets that are currently in it, including the King, the ACS, county incidents, for mortality, survival from the DOH, county health profiles from the DOH, county health rankings, and that's national data, environmental quality index from the EPA, 
radon data because one of the future projects I'm doing is on radon places, which is a spinoff of the 500 cities. It's a national database by CDC that includes various geographies, small area insurance estimates from the Census Bureau, social vulnerability index, I think that's an E, and uh, environmental justice and screening mapping tools, and then uh, an area of line view that I call healthcare facilities in underserved areas. It has various geography and point data, which I don't really include because of HIPAA issues of ethics and things like that, except for providers and and uh, here's how it looks in currently in October 2023. And I'll get, and I included a button in the middle for bivariate mapping and trend lines, which is in the chart. And there's also, has all the areas and I'll go into it in the next slide. I also in there, there's a documentation button and I spent some time referencing that. I also included a feedback form where people can provide feedback. Now for the drop down area, because there's a display button, full screen button, layers drop down, legend position, method, bins, color, reverse, transparency, and a code book button. In the core path, there's actually a zoom out, zoom in, home, and here are all the download buttons, and here's the summary statistics, and I also included on the right, Appalachia catchment and uh, county labels options that turns them on and off. And down below, I have the data table area and I by default show two lines in order to make it easier to speed up, but you could go up to 67. Color visibility data, search data bar and a table. And here's the part that I included recently that was not in the manuscript because I didn't develop. It's a bivariate map limited to four by four matrix of color spaces. It shows the bivariate visualization between the same geographic area mapped, uses two sequential qualitative color schemes, options to change the data source, layer, color, methods and bins can use all data sources except healthcare facility and underserved because they're all county based. I originally had census track data, but it was hard to display in a qualitative bivariate map. So I just focus on the counties and the future plans to develop training courses and vehicle videos, multivariate spatial analysis, census track data sets, multiple time periods, and some future manuscripts. And the conclusions I used by the Pennsylvania medical community adheres to the high quality and best practices during development. Penn State started the field and still leads it. Designed for hypothesis generation and open source development platform Here's some acknowledgments from people who helped me out throughout the years. And is there any questions? Uh, have you had much feedback from that feedback button yet? No, people have not been using it and it's been a frustrating process. Mm. The most feedback I got was from the usability assessment.
Any questions online? I was just wondering if there was a link to this somewhere. Yes. It's kind of not set up for mobile phones, so I suggest using a laptop. Uh, I, a couple of slides back, I think you had a list of data sources. I'm curious, what was the process for vetting and validating and coming up with that list? Like, um, what kind of input did you have and from the stakeholder community and that sort of thing? How did you get to these layers? That's an excellent question. First of all, uh, it was originally for cancer data. So I kept all the data from the first version for on cancer stuff. I also uh, included some he environmental health data that was not in the ver first version. And basically, I just used data.gov and I found the places that's newer data that was clearly not in the first version. So that's, uh, and uh, the healthcare facilities in underserved areas, they were in the original ones. Uh, I basically just started from the original one and just updated the data. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Nathaniel, for uh, presenting on this topic. Let's all give Nathaniel a hand. I didn't mean to go by so quickly. The next session is at um, 10 minutes, 1140. There's a session here and then also on the main level. And then um, after this next session, there'll be an hour break. Um, lunch is on your own unless you're in high school, which I don't think any of you are in high school. Um, uh, there's a lot of restaurants just within like a block, Strawberry Square is nearby. If you need afternoon coffee, Denim Coffee is like right over there by the Capitol. Good Coffee, Little Amps also has an outpost at Strawberry Square. So 10 minute break. Once again, the bathrooms are out that door. <laughs>